Hello, I'm Chris Thanos. I'm a KMP developer. I need to fix this here. Uh, of course, Tuesday is when tech support's coming out for that. Close it up. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, a Duncan on Devon, uh, the the software AI software developer that we all were so scared of. Oh, anyway, it's long, long, long screen. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we were so scared when they announced this. There was a little, all the juniors are going to quit their computer science programs. And, oh my God, it's over. It's over. Okay, let's keep going. Remember when every programmer was scared of Devon AI? Devon. Devon AI. Devon. Devon. Plus AI software engineer. Well, I definitely do, and I posted a tweet about it, and I said exactly that, and this got quite the reception. 1.4, a thousand likes, 48.5, a thousand views, and the reason isn't do people actually remember of, you know, Devon AI and being scared of Devon AI, but it's mostly like, whatever happened to Devon AI? Whatever happened yeah, to... Whatever happened? There was this big announcement. Oh, whatever, all your jobs are going to be taken away, by the way. Okay, if that ever actually... just by the, Here's a little pro tip. Uh, if, we ever, if we ever see... An announcement like that, we can just assume it's garbage because any any company that gets actual junior level software developer, you won't be hearing about it, okay? And or even because it'll be just immediately go to a mid level to a to developer, and if they actually can do that, you're not gonna have just they're never gonna tell you. It's just gonna be have a company that just starts dominating every single software sector, all the software. It's Dyna Geo Corp, and they've announced their their next software package. <laughs> and everybody goes, ah. another sector falls today because Geo Corp has announced another software package that dominates and does everything you ever wanted the instant you think about it. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So we don't have to worry about that. Don't even worry about that. Just, it's that's so far off in the future. It's it's fantasy land, and that's why I see a problem with us, the sci fi kids getting super confused about what's actually capable of the machine. Uh, go, if you do my free course on how to program from the ground up, it'll show you the capabilities of these, of these machines and you will understand if you go through that whole course, why we're never gonna get an AI out of these things. No, we're never gonna get an AGI out of these devices. We'll get something that'll be a good tool for us, but it's never gonna take the place of us, sorry. Okay, keep going. The momentum or hype that existed after Devon initially launched. Now, if you don't know what Devon is, I'm sure you must have heard of Devon AI at least at one point in your programming career because earlier this year, Cognition Labs, about four months ago, dropped a video seemingly out of nowhere. I don't think a lot of people have heard of Cognition Labs before, and it garnered 1.1 million views with the title Introducing Devon, the first AI software engineer. Now, I'm not going to go into detail or watch this video, but the TLDR was you basically give Devon a task and they solve it for you. Basically stating that you get an editor which showcases Devon's work, you have a command prompt where you can ask Devon questions and things like that. And Devon, amazingly, through the showcase of this video, will do programming tasks for you now which by the way it was all just found out to be completely fake afterwards that was quietly <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah it was completely fake demos so. obviously when we watch the video it's very clear that yeah this is pretty daunting especially for potentially junior engineers or web engineers or you know any kind of engineer it doesn't have to be junior doesn't have to be anything this is pretty scary this is kind of what we are scared of this is like the next level of chat gpt at least for gpt we prompt and copy and paste devon just seems to do it what followed was this hysteria that it's the end it's over devon is going to take over the jobs of so many people now i don't want to say yeah, that hype was really strong when it first came out. A lot of people freaked out. Where is it? Look, if this stuff was actually really anywhere near close to what they say it is, we would already have these kinds of tools, or at least rough. So like, what we have is good. Is good. Is pretty good. The code completion tools. You have to go search on Stack Overflow and all of the, but you still have to know what it is suggesting. And most, let's let's admit it, a lot of times it's wrong. But if you're switching around from language to language and uh, going to the, doing multi-platform type stuff, which is what I'm into, uh, looking at web development and iOS development. It's actually pretty good on those. It just seems Android. Android's this kind of really weird machine, like weird system. It has been changing a lot. It's gotten, it's getting better with Compose. Like JetBrains took it over. There's been some sanity injected into it, uh, but it's still all over the place. So yeah, so using an AI tool for that definitely helps. Uh, but to do pro level stuff, you do have to, you kind of already know how stuff works and there's no way around it. You just have to get the time in the pit, man. You got to do time in the pit like everybody else did, man. That's, that's just the way. Now my beginner's course is helpful on getting you over these humps. I can see people having about these issues, but you got to do time in the pit, man.
say that that's not true. However, it's been pretty much discovered by this phenomenal video by Internet of Bugs. The link will be in the description down below. Basically, debunking Devin, the first AI software engineer Upwork lie exposed. Basically, he states that one of the videos or claims that Devin was able to accomplish Upwork tasks or a job like a freelancer would is completely fake. It's it's it was made up and it was crafted by the Cognition Labs. And we discovered that 99% of these demos these guys did this before the ZERP, when we're still a ZERP environment. Yeah, they're all scams and fake, so. A marketing team or whatever, just to make it appear like it was more powerful than it really was. What these lies. Now the promises they were making were should have had, they should have had this by now. If their training models continued the hyperbolic rise, that was all predicted, but now it has curved. We're already S curving it on the AI, this, this generative AI stuff. We're, this, it's going to be good for customer service for our apps and like suggesting things or workflows, things like that. But it's never going to replace creating the things, these apps, because humans are just too, we're too weird and strange and varied and have these, all these little quirks and edge cases. And yeah. These do is they cause non-technical people to believe that AI is far more capable than it is at the moment. And that causes all kinds of problems. So now if we kind of look, you know, four months. It solved the short term one. We get funded this quarter. It is great. We got funded. This quarter. Months later and kind of ask ourselves, well, where is Devin? Yeah, that's real sustainable, by the way. Devin, what happened to Devin? You can log into Devin. You can give Devin a task to work on. Hey, uh, Devin, can you create a, a next uh, JS application? Whoops. That showcases graphs of uh, daily users for a MVP. Something like that. I just made it up. Let's see what happens. And you can see here, get started with Devin. And right away, we have to first, you know, fill in the first name, last name, company name, job title, whatever. And you gain this a beta access. Now, for all intensive purposes, I have yet to see anyone actually get the access to Devin AI. If you oh, shocker. Oh, that's a real shock there, guys. Even look at the blog post. The last blog post came June 5th of 2024, where it says we've been working closely with a diverse range of companies and developers to make Devin a more collaborative, knowledgeable, and productive teammate. We're excited to share some recent improvements here. June. Okay. Which basically, if you read it, nothing too major. Well, if it was, if it were, if it was, this was a real, actual software developer, do you think they would stop posting in June? No, they'd be posting all the Upwork wins and how much money this thing's making. You could rent one too. You think they're gonna let you have one of those if they could just cash in on all the the low hanging fruit of the twenty percent of the Upwork jobs that do all the bidding process and all the bidding and all the. The whole back and forth talking to the customer and all that junk. We could let you have it. Sure, <laughs> kind of uh, just a monthly update, but nothing too substantial, nothing to kind of write home about on, on this blog. But it's been, you know, almost two months since we've heard anything from the Cognition team. And this is a good opportunity while we're talking with the team to definitely mention the CEO, Scott Wu. Now, whether you believe or, you know, subscribe to the fact that Devin is a scam or a lie or whatever, you have to kind of tip your hat to the CEO, Scott Wu. Young dude, but you can see here, he is also a competitor program who won. No, no, hats off. Hats, hats off. A capitalist society, he, he, he won that he won that round for sure. Three gold medals at the International Olympiad in Informatics and came third place in 2021, Google Co. Jam. This guy is very impressive. This is a person you do not want to mess with. He is uh, pretty oh, serious. And then you can see here, Devin AI raised a whomping $21 million in funding from Peter Thiel. Peter Thiel got fooled by this. That guy should know better. It was a founders fund. So that's no joke. That's a lot of cash. Lot. But 21 million to Peter Thiel is rounding error. A lot of capital. What I'm just interested in is, is where is Devin? You know, I want to know more about Devin. What's the next step of Devin? Because this debunking video by Internet of Bugs is a really powerful video. That Yeah, there was no response by Devin to that video. Really? That was, Okay, that should have been the time. Shut up, old man. You don't know what you're talking about. Devin's great. It's been doing everything perfectly the whole time. What's wrong with you? No, not a peep. It does showcase Devin in a negative light. And it does, you know, fact for fact, expose the video so much so that the Upwork task or job that Devin solved, they were actually able to trace the individual who posted that listing. And he, the guy who posted the job, even confirmed Devin just didn't do what he wanted it to do. So what I'm trying to summarize here is this isn't necessarily a doomer like AI is a scam. You don't have to worry about it. I think, of course, like AI, we have no idea. Oh, it's a scam. There's going to be a bunch of these. Uh, when they'll never let you have access to what they're this this actual junior program. They're never that's this that's the NSA level stuff. They'll never let regular human people. But we're the so the best we're gonna get is these co completion, auto complete, digest, summarize type tools. We suggest workflows, maybe convert from one language to another, but not really super well. I think that's going to be the limit for right now until we have the next iteration of this where it can check itself a little bit better. But even then, 
the amount of horsepower you're gonna have to throw at this thing to get it to do it right. Ooh, I don't know. It's gonna be pretty. I mean, they're already complaining about the bill on the expense on the already on the electricity on this stuff. So, and we're talking about a couple orders of magnitude beyond that. Uh, maybe this is a dead end. No idea what's happening behind the scenes of open AI cognitive. Oh, we've seen that. We've seen the limit of what it can do. It's a very intuitive type of thing. It's like some of the code it actually hallucinates is kind of where this, the API I'm working with should be set up. And so it's like, I'm thinking the right way. And it's looking at it. It's like, yes, but, but of course, it's implementing some other screwy way. It's like, made sense at that moment in time for that team for the project they're working on and their 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 requirements it made sense but like for how, what i'm trying to do with it and you know what i'm trying to go with it and that the hallucinations it's actually pretty accurate to what I, how I think the thing works it's completely wrong but it's like we could like that would be good to have you know an api testing it's like does this make sense is this is like having a like a, a sounding board it's like i'm gonna i want to do it this way or what is kind of a suggested good way to like separate it? What am I missing here? You know, how would this be better situated to make more sense to more people? I think it's that kind of stuff. It's going to be, it'd be good for board. What to do and how to make it work? Never. We don't know the capabilities. What we do know is there's a huge investment on GPUs to make AI better. And they're collecting our data. They're collecting our data right now. Whatever application you're on, your data has been collected. What I think is most going to happen and what's already happened is we saw this boom of AI being marketed, being funded. However, the capabilities to meet the expectations of an actual software engineer, I think that gap still needs to be bridged. I don't think right now, Devin AI... Yes, yeah, so this guy's too young enough to understand like it's just never going to be bridged. That's why we're, we're always going to be in the loop of this stuff. We're going to have to be... There's going to have to be a technical person who understands how these machines work. Even the machine can suggest how how to make how to write this how to write the program. It's like, does that make sense for humans? Right? Does it make sense for humans? Which again, these tools are all human. I know it sounds all sci-fi. We get people get all confused with the sci-fi versions of this stuff. No, the one the, for business, it's for humans. Like I. Based on everything I've seen, is capable of replacing engineers. And I don't think there is a lot of AI that can replace engineers. There's always going to be that component of that human element that's needed. And I do want to say, a few people caught on. I did specifically use this wording. So I said, when every programmer was scared of Devin, I specifically didn't use the word software engineer. And the reason for that is because I truly believe software engineer isn't necessarily a role that can be replaced with AI. As far as I can understand, I think like when I think of a script kitty programmer, and I'm not saying this in a negative term, but I'm just ah, it's just these splitting hairs on these terms. These are all nuanced things. They've changed all time over time. I used to be a real badge of badge of honor to be called a programmer. Back in the day, and basically it was software engineering. It wasn't even software development. It was like engineering. You know, you're building off OSs and you're building up graphic stacks from scratch. You know, that that's an engineer. That's more like I think more of an engineering where you're building the platforms that people that software developers are going to use, the libraries you're going to use. Uh, so there's all these different levels of terms that are all interchangeable. You're saying like what AI can reasonably replace. A programmer is much more believable than a software engineer in terms of replacing. I think I think Devin and the things these threats of Devin. Uh, I think is a big is a bigger problem for junior engineers or people are just starting to get into it because they get a good start on these things and they don't have to really understand what's going on, and they can still get a lot of stuff working without fully understanding what's going on, and then they get to a point and they're stuck, and that's when they can't go any further, and they'll just start hacking away at stuff, and that's when it gets bad, right? That's when we see issues occur, so. I think juniors wanting to try and skip over the understanding of how these things are put together from the bottom up, that may, that's a problem and that's not going to go away. And those people are going to always going to struggle. They're always going to complain and struggle because they want to try and skip a step. And there's a couple of crucial steps you got to know about how these damn things work to make a sense out of them, to, to use the tools, the AI tools that they're suggesting, they're giving you the suggestions, the autocompletes of how to how to syntactically design your design what your what you want to create the machine to create uh you still have to know how it works sorry think that job but what do you guys think let me know in the comment section down below always remember give a like and subscribe because this is a good video i thought it was gonna be a little bit more hardcore like i'm talking about it but i guess he's st he's still a youngster uh he's under 40 he's a youngster to me because uh, i'm old uh and i've seen these things happen over and over again and there's been a pretty tight pretty hard wave of uh pretty pretty gnarly wave of like uh that's, that's not how machines work and that's not how people work and that's not how business works it's like there's been a level of like a couple layers removed from reality that needs that's going to come back now because we're in a normal interest rate environment and the zero interest rate stuff has gone out of the way it's so all these hucksters and 
slick salesmen can't get to do their tricks to get funding. That's over. So, and this is a new waiver coming in too. So give me a like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon.